Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing a third person camera rig with a 3D HUD by popular demand. Before I get started though, I really wanted to thank my patrons, as I wouldn't be able to pay my phone bill on time this month without them. So yeah, thank you to all my patrons, and if you didn't know I have a Patreon, uh, this video is going to be out there a day early on my Patreon. So if you want a day early perk as well as access to my private discord server go ahead and check the link in the description in the past we have made plenty of camera rigs and this rig isn't too different than those rigs to understand what we are making though i want to explain what a rig is first a rig is something that allows us to have much more control over the camera in our case for a third person camera we want to have two axes of control, the Y axis and the X axis. To translate this into dreams, with two axes of movement, we need two parts that move. One to rotate left and right, the Y axis, and one to rotate up and down, the X axis. To do this, we can't just use pure logic, so we're going to need two cubes to move. Once you have one, make it not visible and non-collidable as well as 0% dense and make it ignore gravity. Then copy it and place it a bit above the first cube. I usually use the grid to make sure the next part lines up pretty easily. Next, get a bolt connector and connect the right side of the bottom cube to the right side of the top cube. Once you've done this, we have the basic rig constructed. Next, we need to set up the actual camera. Since this rig's purpose is the 3D HUD, we need some way to represent the screen for us to put objects onto the screen. The easiest way to do this is to create a sculpt that is the exact size of the screen, then line the camera gadget up with it. Most, if not all, screens have a standard size ratio, and it is 16 by 9. So, in sculpt mode, we can turn on the grid, fairly small, and make a rectangle with a width of 16 ticks and a height of 9 ticks. Once you have the sculpt, you want to size it down very, very small, as a larger one will clip through the ground and or walls. Go ahead and give it the same properties you gave the cubes earlier. Next, we need to set up the camera gadget first, so go ahead and place a microchip on the rectangle. Then place a camera onto the microchip. We want to make sure the camera gizmo is in the center of the rectangle. I'm using the grid to do this. Next, line up the camera view to have the entire rectangle on the screen. Make sure there isn't any part of it clipping outside of the screen. Now that we have the basic HUD logic set up, go ahead and group the rectangle to the top cube and make sure it is in the center of the cube. Go ahead and move the rectangle quite some ways away from the cube making sure it still stays on the middle of the front face of the cube. You can adjust this later, but for now, just align it by eye. Next is the rig logic, which is actually quite simple. Go ahead and make sure you are scoped out of the top cubes grouped, then select the top and bottom cube and group them. Then place a microchip on the bottom cube. Now, in our case, we are moving the rig dependent on the player's input. You can either use a new wireless controller sensor, or a wireless transmitter slash receiver setup with the Puppet's controller sensor. I prefer using the wireless transmitters as it's cleaner. We're going to be needing the left and right sticks input for the best results closest to the Puppet camera. Make sure to use the local outputs on the third page and not the regular ones. Before we actually get started on the moving logic, let's go ahead and get the rig to follow the player. It's simple really, all we need is to use teleporter on the rig logic and tag on the player. Go ahead and align the tag's gizmo to be around the chest area on the puppet. Make sure to name the tag and set the teleporter's tag name input. Next we want to use the input to rotate the rig as well as rotate the cube in the rig up and down. Well, we want two separate inputs, up and down, then left and right. So we will need a splitter. Then to actually rotate the rig, we'll use a rotator to rotate it left and right. 
Since we can't use rotators in groups, we will need to animate the top cube, so grab a timeline and a timeline. Go ahead and link up the X output of the splitters into the speed input of the rotator. Open the properties of the rotator and set the speed to negative 240 degrees and set the strength and dampening to 100%. Also, make sure this rotator gizmo is set up correctly so it rotates left and right. Next, set up the timer to use speed, set the target time to 1 second, and the current time to half a second. Hook up the Y input to the timer start input. Next, go ahead and open the timeline and hook up the timer output to the playhead. Use keyframes to animate the top cube to rotate up 80 degrees using the precise move tool, and then down 80 degrees for the other keyframe. Go ahead and set the blend mode to linear, and make the timeline length 1 second. At this point, everything should technically work. However, there are several ways we can improve it and make it more accurate to the puppet camera. One thing you may have noticed is that the left stick moves the camera way too much, as well as the camera movement is really stiff. To fix this, we can place signal manipulators between the input and the splitters. Set the fade up time and the fade down time to 0.4 seconds on both of them, or to whatever to your liking. On the left stick signal manipulator, we need to change the mode to custom remapper, then set the max output to 0.5. This will halve the speed with the left stick. Now the camera is much smoother. Next, we need to fix camera clipping. For this, we only need two gadgets, a ray scope and a keyframe. Go ahead and scope into the rig group, then place a microchip on the top cube. Go ahead and place a ray scope and a keyframe in this microchip. Using the keyframe, animate the rectangle in the top cube group to be really close to the top cube. Next, set the laser scope to detect only visible things that are both collidable and not collidable. Then, set the direction to point towards the camera. I use the grid for this. Now set the length to zero, then the fade length to a little bit past the camera. On the labels page, you may need to turn off the labels that the puppet has, otherwise it may detect the puppet and zoom in. If your puppet doesn't have any labels, go ahead and add one. Then turn that off in the laser scope. I'm using the friend label. Plug the ray scope into the keyframe, then bam! You have a near perfect recreation of the puppet camera with a place to set up a 3D HUD. You may need to play around with the visibility settings of the groups, as they can be set up improperly by the game and therefore making whatever you set up in the 3D HUD invisible. Now you can go ahead and group anything you want to the rectangle to make a 3D HUD. However, when you first place an object in a group with the rectangle, you will probably have to reanimate the keyframe, but after that, adding new objects will be fine. However, whenever you group something to the rectangle, be sure to make them non-collidable, as well as ignore gravity and 0% density for best results. Thank you all for watching this video, um, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more time lapses in the future. I also want to thank my patrons, Christian Sanchez, Derry Skolassen, Dylan Woodbury, Empty Chest, Mythic Marty, Patrick Keller, William Snyder. Once again, thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.